This is Bobby Siegel. He's a math teacher, writer, host of the Maths Appeal podcast, and even appeared on the television. Now, Bobby Siegel has a friend, and this friend has a seven-year-old son who was given this math problem at school. He didn't understand it, so he showed it to Bobby's friend, and Bobby's friend passed it on to Bobby. Nobody, including Bobby, could figure it out. So he shared it on threads, and thus began a rush of mildly amusing replies and riveting news articles to extensively discuss this math problem. But here's the twist. It wasn't this fun little time puzzle that everybody was talking about. The actual math problem in this story is completely incoherent, so we're gonna have to solve this one at the end just to get our fix. The actual math problem that Bobby's friend's seven-year-old son was given was this. Dina is baking. The cake bakes from 11 o'clock until half past 11. The brownies bake from 10 past 11 until 25 to 12. Do you agree with Dina? Explain your answer. Bobby himself said, I'm a school maths teacher and I can't solve it. Any ideas? Am I missing something? I think a lot of these silly math homework problems that end up on the internet can be interesting. Sometimes there's actually stuff to discuss, some possible explanations for what's being asked, or sometimes it's a totally legitimate math problem that's just poorly formatted or poorly worded. In this case, however, I feel like there's really nothing to talk about. My first impression upon reading this was, oh, there isn't any math here. Obviously, something has mistakenly been omitted from this question. Pretty much everyone who replied to Bobby's threads post seemed to agree with me that there's really nothing here, but Newsweek took a more nuanced perspective. What do you think? Is there anything salvageable? in this question? Well, let's take a look at Newsweek's cutting edge reporting. After giving an introduction to the situation, they go into the responses. They say some responses were hilarious, like, don't mess with Dina. <laughs> don't mess with Dina. Don't mess with Dina. <laughs> don't mess with Dina. <laughs> I could have never thought of that. Oh my God. Don't mess with Dina. <laughs> That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> Newsweek, <laughs> oh, News, Newsweek goes on to say this, this sensible conclusion, it's probably missing a key bit of information, meaning it's an unsolvable problem as it is. And I don't know if I'd use that terminology. It's not a problem as it is. It's simply a vague question. The only problem I have is my aching abdominals after that rib splitting quip about a, what was it? Uh, don't mess with it. Now, of course, Newsweek reached out to Bobby for comment and ever the respectful optimist. He said, well, I'd rather see deeper maths debates go viral. At least it's got people talking about how we teach maths. And if Dina's cake and brownies can do that, maybe it's a win for numeracy. And they didn't stop with Bobby Siegel. They also reached out to former upper elementary math teacher, curriculum developer, and Doodles and Digits founder, Carolyn Farkas. She said, of course, that details are missing. She noted that key factors, such as whether there's only one oven or the exact baking times, are missing. And that's what makes it a perfect conversation starter rather than a straightforward calculation. And you know, that's a good point. Sometimes it is good to just have a conversation starter in math class. I actually have this whole envelope full of awesome, interesting conversation starters. Let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah, these are all really interesting math things that I just love talking about. This one, this one's really fascinating. So a lot of great potential when it comes to math classroom conversation starters. All super interesting stuff. Farkas goes on to mention that time problems often trip students up because they don't follow a base 10 system. We'll see how we can deal with that when we solve that actual time puzzle in just a couple minutes. Then you also have time related phrases to interpret like half past and two 
too. And she mentions that to support students, tools like number lines, T-charts, and analog clocks are all helpful. Those are all good points, and it seems like Farkas finished by just saying that these sort of challenges are ideal math warm-ups because they spark discussion and encourage students to defend their reasoning. I think she is just being polite because this problem absolutely does not fall into that category of problems that would prompt an interesting discussion, in my opinion. I think this would just leave the vast majority of students completely confused, but it's absolutely true that it can be really nice to start a class off with a question that has multiple reasonable answers. But this is not a math problem. This is a big fat nothing burger. Well, at least that's what I thought. You see, The Independent also wrote an article on this very same problem. Viral elementary math question has stumped the teacher. Can you solve it? Are you kidding me? I can't even cut papers straight. And while I kind of thought this problem was unsalvageable and is just clearly missing some information, The Independent starts their article off pretty boldly. Indeed, they say here that the answer to the math problem can be found at the end of this report. So let's take a quick look through the Independence Report. They start off by saying a math problem has left the internet stumped and social media users scrambling from their nearest protractor to figure it out. They say if the problem seems to be a head scratcher, that could be because it lacks key details, making it more of a discussion prompt than a clear calculation. Although in fact, this isn't the Independent saying this, this is them paraphrasing what Newsweek said Carolyn Farkas said. In fact, their whole article is pretty much just the Newsweek article again, with some very slight changes in wording. Both the Newsweek article and the Independent article cited many of the same responses to the original thread post in their articles or reports. This person just agrees with what I said. This person adds some interesting additional context. You can see that the problem says 5a, which makes it kind of seem like a sub-problem from some greater exercise where maybe the whole thing isn't included here. Perhaps there was some preamble that we are not seeing. Somehow this person claims to know what that is. They say the first half of the statement before 5a tells you that the cake takes 30 minutes to cook and that brownies take 10 minutes longer than cake does. We could still nitpick the wording of the question, but if these details were actually included, well then, there would be a pretty easy way to interpret the problem. Just to nitpick, it doesn't establish a connection between Dina and the cake and the brownies. It just says Dina is baking. Then it says, the cake? What cake are we talking about? Nobody told me Dina was baking cake. This is the first time I'm hearing this. And then brownies? Who said anything about brownies? The brownies? Which brownies? But making the obvious assumption that Dina is baking this cake and those brownies, and assuming this detail just wasn't pictured, then do we agree with Dina is just answering the question of whether or not she has accurately carried out these cook times. So she would need to bake the cake for 30 minutes, according to this. Has she done that? Well, yes, she did. She baked the cake from 11 to half past 11, so 11.30. That's 30 minutes, so the cake has been baked successfully. Now, the detail here also says that the brownies take 10 minutes longer than the cake so she should be baking the brownies for 40 minutes. But if we run the numbers here, we'll see that she has not done that correctly. 10 past 11, of course, that's 11, 10. But then the problem hits us with this very awkward phrasing that she baked the brownies until 25 to 12, which is not a way anybody ever speaks about time, but it's clear what it means anyway. 25 to 12 is the time which occurs 25 minutes before 12. And that would be 11.35. So she has baked the brownies until 11.35, which of course is only 25 minutes. In which case we would say, no, we do not agree with Dina because she has not cooked the brownies long enough. They need another 15 minutes. The weirdest thing to me though, is that both of these articles included this response about how there's additional context and they didn't elaborate on it at all. I feel like if you're gonna include this response, you should at least say, hey, if this information was there and it just wasn't included in the original picture that was maybe sent to Bobby, 
well, then that would totally explain things and we could answer the problem and here's what the problem would be. But it wasn't included in the report. Well, actually, we haven't finished reading. M maybe that's what the answer will be. Let's continue. Other users criticize the confusing wording. Yeah, someone takes issue with the weird way they explain the time. This other snippet from the independent report just shows how exactly zero effort is put into these write-ups. The author says that another took issue with the cook times listed in the problem and then just quotes somebody who explained the cook times in the problem. And it seems like this person is trying to answer the question, like they think the appropriate response to the question is to just describe how long the things have been cooked for. Regardless, they say brownies take five minutes less, no? 1110 to 1135, which we just went over, that's how long Dina cooked the brownies, is 25 minutes versus 30 for the cake. So they're just saying what Dina did. Brownies took five minutes less. And the independent report has said that they are taking issue with the cook times. Am I crazy? Is, is there something in the tone here that I'm not getting? Finally, at the end of the report, we get our promised answer. More information is needed to solve this problem. I already knew that. I thought you were gonna surprise us with a delightful answer, not more of this honky tonk hogwash. Unbelievable. Now, while the independent didn't have a satisfactory answer to the problem, one of the commenters did say there is enough information and they've provided an answer. And I think their answer is pretty good, aside from them saying that the question cleverly tests the ability to interpret the different ways that people use to present time data. Very good. I think that is way too charitable to the question, but I do think their answer is probably as good as we're gonna get as far as an answer to this problem goes as written. They simply say, do we agree with Dina? No, Dina is wrong because her current arrangement leaves the oven on for 35 minutes, but the cake only cooks for 30. So if she would just put the brownies in at the same time as the cake, then she could switch the oven off after only 30 minutes, thus saving a little bit of that precious electricity, assuming she's using an electric stove. But again, the problem's just missing all these key details. Either way, electric or gas, I'm ready to call it. Do I agree with Dina? Nope. I don't. All right, now let's do that actual time puzzle. This problem is from Henry Dudeney's 1917 book, Amusements in Mathematics, although I've taken some creative liberties with the presentation. Let's read it. I say, Mr. Wizard, what is the time? A strapping man asked his neighborhood spellcaster the other day. The answer was very curious. Today, today, today is the, the day, day that you decide, decide things are, are going to be, be different. different. Study, Study, lift, do, do math. math. Build. Become, Become a, weapon. a weapon. Maybe you should disappear, disappear for a while. Sometimes you need to get away. You need to escape, said the wise wizard ominously as he brought his face closer and closer to the strapping man. Uh, the, uh, the time, sir? Oh, if you add one quarter of the time from noon till now to half the time from now till noon tomorrow, you will get the time exactly. The wise wizard inhaled deeply, then stepped away. So, what was the time? If you want to try solving the problem yourself, now's your chance to pause the video and give it a try. Let's go over the solution. Now notice the wise wizard says a bunch of stuff we can do to get the time exactly. So we're going to have an equation and on one side we'll have the time right now and on the other side, you know, we're going to set that equal to the time that is described by all this wacky stuff he says. Now, of course, time can be an awkward thing to work with because we need to deal with hours and minutes, like 1220, that's 12 hours and 20 minutes. We could put everything in terms of hours, but then we're dealing with decimals. So let's put everything in terms of minutes. Thus, the time now will express as 60 times H for hours, plus m for minutes. So if it's 420, for example, that's four times 60, so 240 minutes, plus another 20 minutes. All right, and this is equal to all that wacky stuff that the wise wizard said. Let's take a look. He says, if you add one quarter of the time from noon till now, so let's start with that, one quarter of the time from noon 
till now. The time now is this. So one quarter of the time from noon till now, we're going to assume that we can express just as the time now. So we're assuming it's PM. If it's 3.20, then it's been three hours and 20 minutes since noon. We can assume that because later in the problem, he says till noon tomorrow. So if this was referring to noon the previous day, as in the current time is AM, so from noon till now would be referring to the previous day's noon, well, then he would have said noon yesterday. He said noon tomorrow here. Here he just said noon. So we're going to assume that's noon today. So the time from noon till now is just going to be expressed as whatever the time now is. Again, for another example, if it's 4.30, the time from noon till now is 4 hours and 30 minutes. So a quarter of the time from noon till now is just going to be a quarter of... 60h plus m. And he says that we can add this to half the time from now till noon tomorrow to get the time exactly. So we're going to add half of what he just said. Now, once enough time passes to get us to midnight, we're going to need 12 more hours to get to noon tomorrow. 12 hours times 60 minutes per hour is 720 minutes. Remember, we're trying to put everything here in terms of minutes. So it's going to be 720 minutes from midnight till noon tomorrow. But then, of course, we also need to include the time it's going to take us to get from now until midnight. And well, we know that we need to go 720 minutes total to get from noon until midnight. But some of those 720 minutes have already passed. How many? Well, that would be 60h plus m. If it's 310, for example, then 180 plus 10, so 190 minutes, have already passed since noon. So we need to subtract that current time in minutes. So we subtract 60h and subtract m. Again, this is taking that time that's already passed away from the 720 minutes we need to go from noon today until midnight. Then all we're going to have to do is collect the H's and M's on one side of this equation and make it so it's just a constant on the other side. To get rid of these fractions, let's begin by multiplying everything by 4. And that gives us this equation. Of course, the left side has been multiplied by 4, and on the right, that 1 fourth has now disappeared. And over here, a half times 4 is 2, so we just distribute that factor of 2 through the brackets. We get 1440 plus 1440 minus 120h minus 2m. So now we're going to collect all the h's and m's on the left side. We'll subtract 60h, subtract m, and then add 120h and add 2m. That gives us 300h and 5m. That's on the left side. And on the right side, what remains for a constant is 1440 plus 1440. So 2880. Sorry, I accidentally put a 1 there at first. 2880. At a glance, we can see that everything here is divisible by 5. So dividing everything by 5, we get 60h plus m is equal to 2880 divided by 5, which is 576. So what time is this? Well, it's the time that corresponds to 576 minutes. Again, we're assuming it's PM. 60 goes into 576 nine times because nine times 60 is 540, which leaves 36 minutes left over. Hence, H, the hour time, is 9, and M, the minutes, is 36. Final answer, then, is that the time exactly is 9.36 p.m., which is an awfully late time to be encountering a wizard. Well, that was amusing. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And remember, don't mess with Dina! <laughs> I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsort the table If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so